We are gonna start with some basic tuning by increasing the shadows to recover details in the darker parts. And reducing the highlights for details in the sky. Zooming in you can see details lost in the beard here. So we'll go to masking by tapping on the strikes icon on the top right, view edits, tune image and brush. Here with the effect enabled and the brush value at zero, removing the effect on the beard. You can toggle the eye icon to see where the mask is removed. Next in curves, I am first gonna darken the image by dragging the curve towards right. Dragging the top point down to make the image look not too contrasty. Then with masking, carefully removing the effect on the face to get more prominence. Zooming in to the maximum to get a precise selection and brushing out the effect. Also masking out around the boatman. Also around left part of the landscape where the sunlight is coming from. Next few selective filters to pop parts of the image. First one on the boatman to give more brightness and contrast. Couple on these mountains to remove the hazy look by decreasing the brightness. Another couple of filters to give some color to the sunset. Also one on the board for more structure. Now I'm gonna apply my favorite vintage filter with the preset pearl. Increasing the vignette strength. Also the style strength to darken the image. Then with masking we'll remove the effect to pop the main subject. Looks like it is too dark so going back to decrease the vignette strength.
removing the mask around the lamp and on the left part of the image. Now to give more brightness to the face, I'm going to use the brush tool. Here with the value of the dodge and burn at 5, brushing on the face to make it look like the light from the lamp is hitting the face. Also adding warmth by choosing the temperature option. Next, to give more light to the lamp, using curves, I'm gonna crush the blacks by dragging the low point of the RGB curve up. Then add a lot of yellow by dragging the blue curve which is opposite of yellow towards right. Adding some red to the mix. Then with masking, applying it around the light source on the lamp. Little more brightness and some color. Coming back to the brush tool for some more dodging on the face for more pop. To give overall warmth to the image for a new look, increasing the temperature and adding some red tint. Now for some contrast to the foreground by increasing the brightness to the highlights. Then with masking, applying it on the foreground. Next for some selective sharpening around the board by increasing the structure and applying it with masking. A little more tuning the mask in the vintage filter. So here are the changes after each edit. And the final result.
going to try the neon lights on signs in the middle and also this red roof on the gas station. To do that first I need to turn them to white. First in tune image increasing the saturation to the max which helps in getting some contrast in the black and white filter. Opening the black and white filter choosing the color where I am going to get maximum contrast on the signs. Selecting the yellow option here. You can notice the motel cafe sign has some grayish color. To make it completely black I am going to use curves and tune the contrast to make it completely black. Now to make the remaining parts completely black again with curves, dragging the top point to the bottom to make the image black, then going to the masking screen. Tapping on the stacks icon, view edits, curves and brush. Here with the effect hidden and brush value at 100, I am going to zoom in and carefully brush around to make the surroundings black. Zooming out, brushing the remaining parts. I'll also manually brush around this board where I'm going to create neon light effect. Now I'm going to save this. Next I'm going to go back to the original state by reverting back which deletes all the effects applied. Next using double exposure I'm going to add the saved image. And select subtract mode which brings back the colors from the original image. Again I'm going to save this which will be later needed. Reverting back again to the original state. Now starts the main process. First I am going to make the image dark to get nearer to the night effect. In tune image decreasing the brightness to the maximum. I am going to also decrease the saturation. Also making the image cooler by reducing the warmth. Making it a little more darker by reducing the brightness again. Next I am going to add some red ambient light coming out of the board on the gas station. To do that using curves, dragging the red curve up which adds red to the overall image. Also lifting the RGB curve to make it a little brighter. Next with masking, I am going to apply it there first by brushing it with 100% opacity and brushing out the remaining parts by reducing the brush transparency to zero. Also applying here on these with 25% transparency to make it look like some red light is falling there. Also bit on the ground. Next similarly to create on the Roy sign, first lifting the blacks, adding yellows by dragging the blue curve down. And a bit of greens too. To 
with masking applying it. Now creating some blues for the sign below. Adding blues and lifting blacks for brightness. Applying it with masking. With double exposure tool, I'm going to add the large saved color text image and select the blend mode add which switches on the neon lights. I'm going to now try to give some light to the signs on the right. Going back to the original image, I'm going to increase the temperature in white balance to 100 and save the image. Also delete this effect which is not needed here. Coming back to the previously lost edited state, using double exposure, I'm going to add the newly saved image and increase the opacity to 100. Then with masking, zooming in and brushing on the signs. This gives it a warm light effect. Also, I'm gonna apply it on the person in the middle. about two. Now I'm gonna add some green light effect in the gas station. Again with curves adding greens and some brightness. With masking applying it. Next into an image increasing brightness and warmth. With masking applying it on some parts on the foreground. The colors on the person look too bright, so using selective filter, decreasing the saturation. Also little brightness. Applying some vignetting with the vintage filter. With masking, removing the effect on the parts where the lights were created.
Going back to the first effect applied where I'm gonna bring back the saturation which gives it a cooler look in the background. After these changes, the final result here. edits in tune image menu but with different edits for the highway and different for rest of the foreground. First opening the tune image menu and without any tuning I am gonna just apply this. Now going to the masking screen, tapping on the stacks icon, view edits, tune image and brush. Now I am gonna apply masking on the highway. With the effect disabled and brush value at 100, first I am gonna roughly brush on the highway. Then with the opacity set to 0, zooming out and brushing out the parts other than the road. This is a one time masking work, so taking time to get it right. Toggling the invert icon, we have basically created two masks, one on the road and the other on the remaining parts. Applying this, I am still in view edit screen, tapping the three dot menu, choosing copy which copies the last effect, that is tune image with the mask selection. Now going back to tuning the sliders, making sure the mask is applied on the highway. Increasing the contrast to maximum which takes effect on the highway. Now tapping the three dot menu and selecting insert which copies the tune image with the mask selection. Increasing the contrast again on the highway. Inserting the effect again. This time toggling the invert option which inverts the mask. So now the effect is applied on parts other than the highway. Reducing the shadows and also the highlights to make these parts darker. Not concerned with the sky here as it will be replaced. Now using double exposure, I am gonna choose this picture of sunset. Placing the part of the sun on the right part of the horizon. Increasing the opacity to 100 and applying. Then with masking, With the effect applied and brush value at 0, brushing out the image on the foreground. But keeping it around the horizon. Again with double exposure, this time adding an image with rainy clouds. Placing it and increasing the opacity to 100. Again with the effect applied and brush value at 0, brushing out the image in the foreground and around the horizon to keep the sunset from the other image. clouds in the foreground more dark, I am gonna apply vintage filter with the preset 12, increasing the style strength to make it more darker. With masking, removing the effect mainly around the horizon which makes the golden light pop.
fine tuning the masking. To make the highway a little warm, I'm gonna again insert the tune image menu with the mask selection, making sure the masking is on the highway. Reducing the highlights. And increasing the warmth. Again with the same tune image toggling the mask selection. Reducing the brightness and increasing temperature for a warmer look. To make part of the foreground more darker, darkening the image a bit in curves. With masking applying it on the foreground. Coming back to the second double exposure to fine tune the masking on the rainy clouds image. To further pop the sunset with curves lifting the blacks, adding yellows and also the reds. Applying it to brighten the golden hour. Here's the final look. Today we're gonna do some creative reflections by first creating cracks on the road and then the reflections of the surroundings and adding one more image to make it look more natural with the Snapseed app. I'm gonna start with this image of barren land to create cracks on the road. Converting the image to black and white and choosing the color which gives maximum contrast. So yellow here. Going to curves tool and applying more contrast. To change the perspective which matches with the road on the image that we are going to add the reflection on, I'm going to use the perspective tool and choose tilt option. Dragging it upwards to get the upper part more narrower. Repeating it again to get the correct perspective. Saving the image. Now opening the base image which we are gonna work on. First I will make a copy which will be used for the reflection. Going to the rotate tool, rotating it two times to make it upside down, then flipping it horizontal, saving this copy. Now 
reverting to the original. Now going to the double exposure tool and adding the saved image of the cracks. Placing it so that it covers the foreground of the image. Choosing the mode darken which makes only the black parts visible and the whites hidden. Also decreasing the opacity to make it look more natural. Applying it, going to masking screen, and removing the black area on the top. Applying this. With the double exposure tool again, I'm gonna now add the upside down flipped image. Without moving the image, increasing the opacity to about 75% and applying it. Now going to the masking screen, with the image hidden, I'm gonna brush on the inner edges of the cracks to reveal the flipped image on those areas. Not worried about the reflection of the subject here as it will be added later as adding it now won't get the correct perspective. Still it doesn't look good. To look natural, I'll be adding another image later. It's up to you where you want to add the reflection. I just want the subject to be covered under, so adding more reflection under the subject here. Applying it. Moving further, we need to do some masking work. Instead of repeating the same manual brushing in the masking screen, I'm gonna copy the edits here. But we need only the last edit. As we don't have the option to copy only the one we want, all the edits done are copied. Now I will use the selective filter to add more contrast and darken the added reflection a bit. Little masking work to remove the effect on the background. I'm gonna now insert the earlier copied edits and delete the first which we don't need. If we open the last one, we will find the added image of the reflection earlier. And changing the mode to darken and moving the image concentrating only on the subject. And placing it so that the subject is exactly reflected from the feet. Increasing the opacity. And in the masking screen, brushing out all the parts except the subject underneath.
applying it. Again inserting the first two edits and deleting the one before. Opening the last one and this time I'm going to add this image and place it so that the water is covering all the puddles. Also decreasing the opacity. And now without doing any masking work, you see the water exactly in the place intended. This is the advantage of copying, especially if you are editing with the same tools. Just notice this unfinished masking work on the legs. Going to the last edit and fixing it. We'll do some color grading with some finishing touches in the Lightroom app. The final result here. We are going to try replicating motion blur on this image. It works pretty well in certain cases considering we are editing on mobile. Starting with basic edits to recover details. In tune image, increasing saturation for more color, reducing highlights and also shadows to give the image more contrast. With curves, I'm gonna try correcting some colors. You can notice a slight red tint in the image, bringing down a bit. Also green. I'm gonna save this. To create motion blur, first I have to remove the motorcycle rider to get better results. So trying the healing tool here. Not working well here. I'm gonna close this. Now I'll try replicating cloning tool from Photoshop to get rid of the motorcycle. Going to double exposure tool, I'm gonna add the last saved image. It is added here. Now I'm gonna move it to the right, maintaining the alignment on the lane. Trying here to get the sample of the road from the new image on the motorcycle underneath. Increasing the opacity to 100. Applying it. Then going to masking screen. Tapping on the stacks icon, view edits, the latest double exposure and brush. Here with the double exposure hidden and with the brush value set at 100. Brushing on these parts to reveal the road applied from the new image. Trying to clear the head here. There is still some parts of this motorcycle left. Again saving this as a copy. Adding the same as a new double exposure image. Again moving and aligning it further to the right. Now 
repeating the steps to clear the road. Repeating the same step again to completely clear the road of the motorcycle. Here we have not got the perfect result but this should be enough to get the final look. To replicate the motion blur effect, I am going to use the perspective tool and select the scale option and drag the image horizontally which basically stretches the image from the center repeating the same till I get that desired motion blur effect. After repeating the perspective tool 4 times adding the earlier saved image with the double exposure tool Increasing the opacity to 100, going to the masking screen. Here with the effect disabled and brush value at 100, just brushing in the middle to reveal the rider. Then with brush value set at 0, carefully brushing out around the rider and the motorcycle to reveal the motion blur effect behind. I'm going to keep the soft shadow which gives the image a more natural look. To remove that spot on the left, you can use the earlier cloning method if healing tool doesn't give the desired results. The changes after each effect applied. the final result. Thanks for watching.